don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing. Langston Hughes was essentially a very important and popular poet during the civil rights movement. He started with small recognitions at a very young age. He was born in Joplin, Missouri in 1902 and raised by his mother and grandmother. After he graduated high school, he wrote the poem, The Negro Speaks of Rivers, and it was a poem that became published by The Crisis, which was at the time an influential American magazine published by the NAACP. He attended Columbia University and dropped out, then got to explore Harlem. Around that time, he was introduced to Alfred A. Knopf and published his poetry collection, The Weary Blues, in 1926. The Weary Blues ties a lot into music, music being a metaphor for abstract feelings that can be said out loud, relating different sides of the Harlem Renaissance in his work. This book got him a lot of attention, awards, and enough money to go back to school and actually finish this time. His poetry was much like the introduction of jazz and blues music that was being brought up around the same time, the Harlem Renaissance. This can be seen because poetry was basically rigid and excessively structured, but it was actually considered excellence. Links and Hughes poetry comes in to change the game and introduces a loose and free rhythm, much like that of jazz and the blues in the music industry. In the 1930s, his poetry became more blunt on racial justice and political radicalism. Hughes' role on the civil rights movement was widely and almost solely involved in the site of the Harlem Renaissance, which can be seen as obvious since he is a poet. Looking back at history now, most people will see Langston Hughes as an asset to the civil rights movement, even though he was very widely criticized by African American critics. His work was accepted and very well received by the white press, but African American critics felt very sensitive about their race being in books. Specifically, in his autobiography The Big C, Hughes talks about Fine Clothes of the Jew, which was a poetry collection published in 1927. Hughes was being criticized and his books were being called a disgrace to the race. It wasn't his intention to make African Americans look bad. He was revealing the African American lifestyle to those who weren't aware of it, which in the civil rights movement was a big deal in order to allow progress. Which is an idea that he sought for himself as well as another step forward in his writing. In 1970, Langston Hughes was noted by a reviewer for the Black World which was then called the Negro Digest, that Langston Hughes stands at the apex of literary relevance among black people and used his artistry to reflect a great reservoir of physical and spiritual strength, continued to explain how Hughes used his poetry to illustrate that there is no lack within the Negro people of beauty, strength, and power. All of this is important for progress in the civil rights movement. There are many sides of the civil rights movement that involved progression and retrogression, and the Harlem Renaissance was one of great progression. As can be inferred, Langston Hughes wasn't a great politician or anyone of that source, but the side of art and culture of the African Americans was very important to allow the people of this country to be able to somehow relate and understand the lives of African Americans in a way that couldn't really be portrayed by a news article or any other media source, but by literature that depicted it better than anything else. By understanding this, most of us can see how relevant a flourish of culture of a certain people can have the power to catch the attention of anyone who's listening. I mean, we listen to music, read books, and partake in many other things that have the power to influence us into thinking a certain way and feeling passionate about whatever's being introduced to us. This just happens to be the way that people think. Langston Hughes was able to reveal not only the hardships of African American lifestyle through poetry, but the beauty that can come from a culture that had been at the time overlooked, which may sound like something that is only an accomplishment for the art of a country, but evidently it was art that had the power to change millions of lives. Therefore, with a combination of social activists in the civil rights movement like Martin Luther King Jr. and Harlem Renaissance artists like Langston Hughes, there becomes a sort of a team that could attack problems at hand from any angle, which is what thankfully accomplished every single triumph in the civil rights movement. <laughs>